So we're just going to have a small wrap-up session where uh, maybe if you have um, any uh, overarching questions for all of our plenaries uh, or any thoughts about the way that you know, you've been thinking about things. This, I'm not very articulate at this point in time. Hopefully all of you are more articulate than I am. Um, so maybe we can just open it up to questions uh, for all of our plenary speakers or um, any kinds of thoughts or impressions you've had uh, about I don't know, things that you thought about. About ends of cinema. About ends of cinema, right, whatever this was about. <laughs> Since I opened the, the debate, and I will uh, be obliged maybe to go with my cab uh, before the end of this, maybe, maybe not, we'll see. Uh, I'd like to add something, because you just mentioned the ends of cinema. And, and I've been, you know, uh, listening specifically for the last post-cinema, post-cinematic exhibition, is that it? Yeah, and, and, and then some other, also in, also uh, Leo, Kael uh, presentation, always coming back, in fact, to the ghost of this conference, which is one of the ghosts, which is André Bazin. Uh, because, in fact, uh, maybe one thing we should come back to read André Bazin to understand maybe that, uh, in fact, uh, there couldn't be uh, uh, an end to cinema for him, if we well understand what he wrote in his paper, the paper that he uh, uh, published in two different uh, 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 versions, one in 46 and the other one in 58. And uh, in fact, uh, what is cinema? Uh, but in fact, uh, uh, for him, uh, 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 the importance was the myth of the cinema tata, the, the total cinema uh, myth. And in this uh, paper uh, in this article, in this uh, reflection from him, in fact, he was uh, uh, reenacting a little bit of the, some ideas of, uh, 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 of uh, Barjavel, uh, Le Cinema Total, and for him, in fact, there wouldn't be, would not be no end to cinema, uh, because uh, uh, in reality, uh, th for him, the cinema was not yet invented in 1946, and maybe he would say it was not invented today. What he means, what, what we mean, I don't know how th this has been translated. Huh? It, it was still being invented in 1946, yeah. not yet invented. E ex exactly. <laughs> but, but in fact, it's because it's... Uh, <laughs> but I, I have the two, 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 the, two dis the, the distinction is very important. Yeah. Because in the first one, he talks about reproduction and uh, of the real. In the second one, he, he talks about the representation of the real. Because I, I, I've been studying those two texts. This was supposed to be part of my uh, conference, but I skipped it uh, before because it was too long. And, and this is very important because for him uh, uh, and for uh, Barjavel also, uh, there's no end to cinema because there's, it's not still uh, the beginning is not finished because it's a, uh, it's a work in progress. Uh, in fact, his, uh, his idea was that the cinema was a project, let's say in 1885 or even before, but a project, uh, you, you've shown all the, the, the different, uh, from the spiral, uh, the different uh, stations. And uh, this idea uh, is to have, the cinema total, is to have integral reality. And maybe there's a problem with reality and realism. Because we think he says that realism is important, but you know, maybe it's more reality to reproduce reality, to be a clone of the reality. So the myth of the cinema total is, uh, of the total cinema, integral cinema, is to get to find a way for the so-called cinema to uh, reprodu reproduce or represent, depends on the version uh, of the two texts, uh, 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 the, the, the real itself, uh, and on, uh, uh, until this is not until this is not done, cinema is not totally invented. So that's one point. And also, uh, so there's no answer since it's not invented. And also, I've seen in the conference that we had a couple of uh, different paradigms about uh, the meaning of ends, which is normal, especially if we think that also there is an expression, I just uh, checked, in French it exists, but in English it, it's good also, uh, uh, the ends justify the means. So the ends of cinema justify the means, and the mean being this conference. <laughs>
Sorry, this onus is on you, Jocelyn. Hi. Uh, Jocelyn Beth brought this back at you, and I don't remember how you uh, formulated this, but you said something to the effect of publics and politics. So perhaps you could reframe that. It's not mine. It's yours. Uh, I just said I'm not articulate anymore. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's throw the two words at the head. Okay. Um, yeah, I think what, what I was interested in was, um, I've been interested in this personally. How does one write political scholarship and how does one write for a broader audience, which I think is becoming more and more incumbent upon us, both in terms of our institutions, but maybe also in terms of um, how we consider ourselves as citizens of the world, right? Um, so one of, my, uh, one of my overarching questions for all of our plenary but also for all of you is how are you conceiving of going about doing that now? What does it mean to have a political form of scholarship and what does it mean to, um, to conceive of oneself uh, in terms of being a kind of public figure or somebody who is articulating any kinds of public thought, especially in something like, um, like the end of cinema? <laughs> called a public intellectual, right? I mean, Susan, Susan Sontag was one of those, right? But I, I actually, I kind of shiver and go deaf <laughs> when, when people ask, you know, insist that we have to be accessible. Um, this is an expectation that's never made in relation to the sciences. And I think it's actually a way of demeaning the humanities. Um, to say, well, this is film, or this is digital media, anyone can talk about that, and anyone should be able to understand right away what you use, you know, what you're talking about, as though there couldn't be any kind of specialized vocabulary in the humanities, as we all accept there will be in the sciences. So I think the, I mean, that question of accessibility also reminds me of the 70s and feminism when a lot of exploration was being done in very abstract film, uh, very experimental film. Uh, and um, at the same time, there was a lot of film that was more accessible, right? That was really based on identity politics um, and on images, you know, positive images versus negative images, et cetera. And I think that, you know, we have to leave room within the universities, and I think maybe this is the only place where there's room for that in, in war. Hopefully not, but um, for some kind of experimentation and to think of a you know, laboratory of work um, where we are sort of trying out ideas. I think that you know, um, I'm old enough to have seen my students take this out when, who don't go into academia, and it does make a difference, I think. So, anyway. I would just, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I absolutely um, agree with you, Marianne, and, and I was just going to add that uh, that doesn't mean that we don't need to be engaged somehow, right? um, responsible to the work that we bring into the classroom and write about. Uh, responsible to the communities that produce that work, um, responsible to each other in terms of engaging a wide range, diverse and inclusive range of material. And so, you know, I think that, that one way that I was asking Michael about the idea of publics was to think about um, where the work's going, um, who's curating it, um, how it's moving in and out of different spaces of publicness, um, not just museum context, but educational context, and, and how we get a hold of it, you know, um, and make new publics for it. So, so, and that is part, that's political work in my view. Um, but it's, um, it's not the same thing as meeting um, an impossible demand for a kind of transparency of discourse um, that is uh, ridiculous. It will now be so much less eloquent, but I mean, I have two models for this, and one is Walter Benjamin's uh, <laughs> radio addresses for children. And I think one of the most radical things we can do, and this isn't, this isn't about accessibility, but about also th speaking really seriously to young people. Um, and I think the other place 
that happens, as Amy uh, said, and as Marianne said, is like, for me, the, the political zone is to be the most ethical, careful, pressing teacher. You know, I think really it's in the classroom that I, politics of how we think makes the most sense. Um, and other people have gifts with writing that few of us don't have. I think one of the ways that we conceived of the ends of cinema was not just as an end, but as a goal, right? Like, what are the ends of cinema? What is, what is the point of it, right? And so maybe one of the points that we can come to of how cinema theory and history um, has an end this weekend is that, um, is that it has an ends beyond itself. Right, it has um, it has an end toward um, toward uh, uh, being good educators, toward being um, critical thinkers, and things like that. So that might be one way to consider. There's another one on the table. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, <laughs> yeah, briefly, I I guess that. Um, mm, I completely agree with you, Leo. Uh, the, the, this, past, this page of Benjamin is fantastic to me. But we have a double duty, I guess. <coughs> One is with our student, and the other, in a certain sense, uh, with our community. And I want to, to put that on the table, because one of the things uh, mm, I experience in Europe the constitution of a strong community. And I experienced here in the 90s the presence of a strong community that was destroyed by Bordwell. For good reason, <laughs> for bad reasons, <laughs> he was destroyed. And, uh, and yeah, it, it was, yeah, it, uh, just for poli academic political reason. And for nationalistic reason, just we have to be American, Trumpian. It was a pre-Trumpian claim, America great again on the film theory, and not import that from France. I'm brutal, but it's, it's, it, it was that. But in a certain sense, uh, uh, of course, I'm too brutal, I, I apologize. <laughs> but in this moment, I feel we have the duty to go back and to be a community for many reasons. And one of the things I'm much more, more I mean, struck in, in, this, uh, in, in this conference, because it's easy to find the sense of community in conferences uh, with very strict and very defined topic. But this topic is uh, wide enough, you can look at. But uh, frankly, there was a sort of the same sensibility in different languages. I, I found a lot of, uh, of element in common with different languages which are not mine. And I guess in this point of view, I do not know if you agree or you agree, in a certain sense to regain not strong theoretical framework is no longer this time. Keep sensibility as the element. But uh, in a certain sense, a certain number of common ground, a certain, a, a certain number of common references to make a common ground may be a little bit useful. Same reference doesn't mean to have the same readings. It's not that but to have the same agenda, and then to be free to speak about that in a way that the dialogue is possible. I do not know if you agree, but to me, that question of community is politically as relevant as speaking in class. No, I'm still trying to process this image of Boardwell with a tiki torch marching through the streets of Charlottesville. Um, give me a minute. Got it. Okay. Um, so. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, I, I'm. I think what I what I what I'm thinking about in terms of uh, the ends of cinema. 
I think that it is about, you know, for me and in terms of the kind of work that's been inspiring me, of thinking about the ways in which my language can be, uh, that my language isn't exclusive, that my language is an invitation to uh, begin uh, particularly like broader conversations around visual, the, the visual and visuality more broadly in visual culture. Um, I know for me that uh, what was important for my scholarship was when I finally started going to the American Studies Association conferences and particularly going to the Black Portraitures conferences uh, and understanding that um, I think what makes our work interesting or the, or the work that I find most interesting is willing to embrace the kind of collateral relationships that you can have in other fields. Um, film will never die. Cinema studies will never die. Uh, and sometimes I worry about the ends of cinema uh, declarations as basically code for saying I'm going to stop doing the work now. You know, that the, the, of trying to, but yes, let's end the closing of the borders in that way. Yeah. Yeah. I want to um, <clears throat> piggyback on that by uh, quoting a colleague of ours who isn't here, um, Scott um, Richmond at the University of Toronto, who said a fabulous thing um, at the SCMS uh, conference. His, um, his call was for us to question our attachments, right? Like I understand the desire for some kind of common text which create community, but why is it important that we always teach Citizen Kane? Is there a reason that Citizen Kane would be more important than Giverny one, right? Like I can't. Or Velvet Goldmine. Or Velvet Goldmine. <laughs> insert, insert movie here, but to constantly be questioning what our common set of texts are, and when you are, um, if not killing your darlings, um, at least putting them, putting them forward uh, for review, um, then you're staying active in the field, right? It seems to me that you're doing the work, you can't, you can't let yourself get lazy, and that's part of what's, what has to be our politics and keep us political. So, does this work? Yeah. Um, weird I'd to talk with my back to you. Um, I want to pick up a couple strands here and starting with uh, what Jocelyn's question was, because I think Jocelyn's question is in part located where we live today in Wisconsin and in Milwaukee. <laughs> and so the question of public and political is very much about the threat that the university has been under here, and not just here, but in states across, well, I mean, not even just in the US, right? I mean, the UK and elsewhere. And so where I agree absolutely with what Marianne said, in fact, you know, I've said the same thing in the same words, when people expect, oh yes, we should, we should understand, I came to your, conference, I didn't understand a word of what you were saying. I've never read a book in, you know, your field, right? And if, and I say the same thing, if you went to a, you know, biochemistry conference, you probably wouldn't understand what the issues were there. So I think that's right. But I also think that we once had a luxury of being able to fight with each other because our support was pretty solid, our, our financial support. The university wasn't uh, under attack and under threat as it is now. And I think because of that, the need for community is pressing now. And I think Francesco's point, and I think others have said that as well. And it's a kind of, you know, we can't fight. I mean, it's not that we shouldn't disagree because I come from a ethnic tradition that, you know, knowledge only comes from disagreement. So, you know, that's, if we don't argue, we don't love each other. So, you know, we should definitely be arguing <laughs> with each other. No, no, and I know you saying that, I'm just underscoring that. But we also need to make space for each other because we have way more significant enemies right now. So we at the center, sorry, I didn't really expect to go this way, but I'm not a film studies scholar, but, but we at the center now have morphed our mission a little bit to embrace the public and the digital as in a kind of explicit way, always keeping critical work first, 
because if we can't make connections with the public, uh, then we are going to be at increasing risk for uh, cuts and so forth. So Michael, I, cinema studies will always exist. Well, maybe somewhere, right? But cinema studies programs are being cut in this state at universities right now, uh, just discontinued, and faculty, tenured faculty being fired. And so this is a bigger question. This really isn't an ends of cinema question at all, so I'm in a way sorry to have gone here, but I do think that part of what I thought was motivating Jocelyn was that sort of political urge. And one thing I'll say, though, about cinema and about media in general, there's a huge public that does a ton, that's obsessed. You know, there are so many cinephiles, there's so many people obsessed with uh, whether these short viral videos, with fan fiction, with writing online, that, that we as media scholars, let's say, are, and humanists maybe more broadly, we need to address that audience. And as, as James said, that audience is young people, younger than college students, I mean, high school and before. And so I really think there is a, a hunger for what we do out there. And I think we do need to find ways to create that public. Um, sorry to have gotten away from, from that. I'm going to just throw one more thing out here, and then I'm going to shut up, um, in case people want to take this in a different direction than the university under assault. And that is, we phrase this as ends of cinema. And one of the things I realized early on in the conference, but it hadn't occurred to me so much, is like the first time I met Andre was at Domator. And I gave a paper about uh, how Thomas Elsesar was at, on the 100th anniversary of cinema was talking about how radical and new cinema was and how the movie, it came in and it changed everything and it was this new marker of modernity and I took this long two paragraphs of Elsesar and substituted the appropriate digital and network terms for the cinematic terms and it read exactly the same way and so cinema has not only been ending all the time, but when it began, it began as something radically new, as a new beginning. And one of the reasons I think we can think about the ends of cinema in a certain way now, although as people have been saying, it's been thought about for a long time, is because there's this other new formation, this other new machine that we're now inhabiting. And so I think that it'd be interesting to talk also about newness and beginnings, not just about ends. So that's it, I'm through. Hi, thank you. Hi. Um, uh, real, like, real talk, right? Yeah. Uh. <laughs> this, this is the, the US context that I'm referencing, but it costs money I'll, to go to college, right? Um, it's been sold for a really long time as, and it's still being sold as a necessity in order to make money. Um, and that's the only thing it's being sold as, right? So the idea of having the, I think there's a difference between what we're, uh, as academics in the humanities are being challenged with today, which is, okay, that's nice to think about, but how can I make money off of that? Can I make an app that will help? Or um, am I just, should I just, just drive a lift? Like, is that better? Um, and I'm not sure how this is connected, but I feel like um, it's worth, it might be interesting to think about the other anniversary today, which is, um, or this week, which is the student uprisings in Paris, right, of May 68. And this shift precipitated by the students challenging the authority of the masters and the scholars, right? Um, and I think that there, we have seen student uprisings in the US um, and they've been managed because there has been a school of thought, particularly in sociology, about how to manage, how to manage uprisings, right? Um, I've been thinking a lot about this. So I wonder, and, and this is the room to ask, right? To what, it, to what degree it would be useful to even, to think about a film like Chronicle of a Summer, right? 
or to go back to the early days, the earliest days of Kaiju du Cinema, right, when they're, when they're fighting against a different battle, which is to say that this is not just a popular mass media form, but this is actually art, and you actually need, you actually need skills. Because part of what's in this conversation is, um, in the attack on, educate, on educators, is education being um, made into a, a, a skillless trade, right? Um, so those are just a lot of musings. And viva la revolution. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, I'm just going to jump in. I just taught ideology to my undergraduates <laughs> in Intro to Film Studies this week and showed them pictures of 1968. And they said, why? Did you, they didn't say, but I imagine they were saying this to me. So I just responded before they said anything. You know, um, uh, and I said to them, this is the formation of our discipline. You know, this is, this is why. So I'm so glad you brought that up because not only is it um, pressing in terms of um, politics right now, but if, if we're thinking about this conference as not only an ends of cinema, but an ends of cinema theory and ends of film history, I think it's absolutely presci prescient, right? That's exactly, that's exactly the formation that we're talking about, so. I had nothing articulate to say about it, except that I agree. <laughs> <laughs> a, a model that it might be from the puberty of cinema, to get back to a term from Bazan's 46 uh, version of the myth of, uh, of total cinema and the uh, invention of the cinematograph, or whatever the original title was, is um, actually third cinema's film acts. And that is an end of cinema, but also the birth of cinema at once. And to really think about like going back to that model, and it's, it's a question I often ask myself, I like to ask students, you know, it really is a, a radical pedagogy that is our tradition and that we could still use regardless of, I think, the text. That's where, our, you know, whatever the attachment is, it's, it's a pedagogical practice that lives and fuels fire. You can't have Sorry. a barricade without a bar. Thanks so much. This has been such a wonderful conference. And Courtney, I love everything you just said. And um, speaking of Chronicle of a Summer, I was thinking about the kind of person on the street interviews earlier are in the you, film where they're, talk, they're asking, are you happy? And they ask yeah. this old man, are you happy? And he's like, no. And they say, why? And he says, because I'm old. <laughs> And soon was really old, right? It's been dying and becoming reborn for a long time. And one thing I love about all the plenary speakers is also just the kind of intergenerational sh smorgasbord, for lack of a better <laughs> word, among the panelists. And I wonder, you know, that what the ends of cinema, what are the ends of cinema? And not just of cinema, but of cinema and film and media studies. Um, Right, getting in the ampersand and the, the new name of the journal and you know one little tight pun. So um, I just I'd love to hear you know, people put their dukes up a little bit and, and just talk about do we all agree about where the field is going and and if not maybe that's even more productive. So maybe we could talk about that. Or are you happy? <laughs> I can say pretty categorically, not, not necessarily for, for us sitting here, but as a field, we do not agree. <laughs> I, got, I got a lot of really strongly worded um, emails about uh, the name change before the vote went through. And, um, and it was great to see people um, get up off their butts and care about uh, the state of their field, which is not something that I feel very often, right? Like I felt it 
at this conference. I can think of a couple of other conferences where I have like felt an emotional charge from people, but I sure as hell don't feel it at most of the SCMSs, right? I don't feel it at field conferences. And so even though people were angry at me and told me that um, I didn't understand the history of the discipline, that I was an upstart, and um, that cinema was a umbrella term which incorporated all other media, which <laughs> seems to just uh, <laughs> indicate a weak grasp of etymology <laughs> to me. Um, yeah, th I think like there's, there's not a whole lot of coherence in the field, and that's a fucking good thing, right? People tell me all the time, like, why don't you have theme issues of cinema journal, right? What I hate about cinema journal is that the articles have nothing to do with each other and you can't trace a theme. And I'm like, is that what you would like? <laughs> who, who shall we appoint as you know the, uh, the lord and master of cinema studies to establish the themes for what we shall and shall not do? Because I have no interest in doing that, and I don't think we actually want that, right? To get back to Richard's point, I think what we want is to fight very passionately with one another, and I admit that there is a danger to doing that in public, right? Like when, you're, when your budget is being controlled by a legislature, telling each other out loud that we are wrong, um, there, are, there, are, there can be real consequences. Um, and I don't have a solution for that, but yet I still think that the argument is deeply important. I'll say one more thing. I think it's unbelievable that Caitlin is our new editor of Cinema <laughs> right? And that that says, and my student, Caitlin, that's <laughs> not, um, but says something extraordinary um, about the direction that our field is taking. So. Just a little shout-out. <laughs> no one else. Talk about being young. <laughs> I, I'm happy. Uh, <laughs> and um, I, I guess I, I, I want to kind of speak to this, this point of the, the um, you know, the, the, I, don't, I don't think we're going to do a death match up here, but uh, yeah, the, 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 I, I know that when I started at NYU as, as an MA student in 95, it was ground zero for, in retrospect, some really trifling shit that was going on ideologically in terms of the kind of battles of what is the direction of cinema studies and uh, whether we're going to go the formalist route and how cultural studies taints and doesn't understand medium specificity. And in retrospect, it, I think we could get a pilot episode out of it. But I'm so grateful for that pilot episode that was my graduate school experience. Um, I haven't argued as passionately, I think, or, as, or I haven't learned as much from the arguments since that time. And I appreciate it more and more as, as, as I find that we're, things have become a bit more polite or, or just a general willingness to just abandon, you know, like, I, why are you gonna go to the Cinema Studies College this year? You know, that kind of mentality. Um, I'm still excited to, when I open up the, 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 the conference program at Cinema Studies, it gets harder admittedly every year to find <laughs> what's going to make me excited. But it, uh, there's, it's still, it's still a, a, a good kind of barometer for where I see the field going and what my place might be in that future. Um, I still, I still, you know, as I said, if you believe in the end of, end of cinema, I just think you're lazy. Uh, and I don't feel totally lazy about it. I still feel like I, I, I'm, I'm excited for what I don't know still that's going on in the field. Um, and yeah, we could argue a bit more about that, but um, so far so good. I'll be quick. I think something else just on the line of the health of the field and it's easy for me to say this, but we need to produce more translations from non-canonical countries. We need to have real meetings, and I know Masha has been, 
you know, advocating for this. But we need more people to totally provincialize and, and, and commit to paying translators, getting skilled translators to do this work because the field will continuously be reborn if we are committed to a plurilinguist uh, field. And if we give our students the sponsorship and support, and I know it's hard in these days, to learn second and third languages. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> About the field, I, I, I didn't understand to the, totally uh, what uh, you just said, but I, I was amazed uh, by this uh, votation from SCMS to change the name of the journal. Uh, but all the story of, uh, of SCMS is a little bizarre, uh, like p this kind of a political correctness to change the name of this, the association from cinematologist to cinema studies to cinema and media studies. But I don't know how you feel uh, uh, here, but to me, I think there is kind of a, a crossroad now. I think we have to decide, or I don't know if we decide this or it will come to us, but either we are from cine cinema studies and we try to, to uh, colonize, if I can say, the other fields, or we make friends with these other fields and uh, the, the, there are exchanges of methods, or I don't know. So I don't know what is the point you, should, you could uh, uh, defend here, but I, I, I think it's a good thing for television studies that they have been colonized by cinema study, which is the case in Quebec, at least. I don't know if it's the same thing here, but... Uh, I mean, not use right. Well, yes, let's just... just yeah, 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 yes. it's, it's really an institutional issue, I think. <coughs> Television could have gone the communication studies route, yeah. or it could go the film studies route. And I think it went both ways, but the part of interest to me is the part yeah. that went the film studies route. <laughs> So I think it's, um, I have to say that, and I, this is probably going to sound pretty mean and scandalous, but um, I came to <laughs> I came to this conference despite the title. Um, I came to the conference uh, because it was at the Center for 21st Century Studies. And I feel I have a history with the center that goes way back. And I feel I have an obligation, in a way, to it institutionally, even if the same people aren't here, et cetera. Um, but it has turned out to be a really great conference. And I'm glad I came. Um, I think it's misnamed still, but <laughs> um, especially the idea of the end of or the ends, or the, as in, you know, the ends justify the means type of, um, I don't even know what that could possibly mean. I think, you know, and I also, I have to admit that I didn't vote on the name change for the Society of <laughs> Cinema and yeah, for the Journal, um, because it's like really low on my to-do list. <laughs> I mean, I think we've had some really great conversations here, but they really haven't been. I was going to come up here and say, nobody here really believes in the end of cinema. Um, and now I feel like saying, everybody believes in the end of cinema. But it doesn't really matter. <laughs> Can I, you want to jump in? No, I was Okay. 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 All right, so I want to respond to what you said, um, Andre. So, um, so sir, first of all, upon taking over uh, Cinema Journal or, or being appointed to, to take the helm for five years, um, assuming I don't get kicked out on my ass before then, um, I went back and read the, the Journal of the Society of Cinematologists. Right? It was only published for about five years. And I went back and I wanted to know, like, what is this thing? Um, what did it used to be? And I don't think that the name change was arbitrary, in fact, right? If you go back and you read those articles, they are deeply formalist and they're making a strong argument for cinema as an art form, which makes tons of sense for where the field was at that particular point in time, right? In, in the, in the mid-century when it was not yet 
um, at every university and, and perhaps under fire, but a, a well-established discipline. But it was a very limited kind of engagement with cinema, right? Like the sort of work um, that, that I want to do that is deeply political, that is talking about the political implications of public exhibition um, and of this art form was not welcome in that journal. And I don't think that changing the name to SCMS, well, I wasn't there when we changed the name, when people changed the name from SCS to SCMS, so I won't comment on that. Okay, so you guys can comment on that. <laughs> I'll pass the mic. But changing the name of the journal, to me, is, has nothing to do with political correctness. Before I proposed it, um, when I was putting together my vision statement for my, why I might want to be editor of this thing, which, by the way, has only ever rejected my work, um, <laughs> I ran the numbers on the papers being given at the conference and the papers that were being published in the journal, right? Just really rough schematics, what media were being covered. And um, as of, I believe it was 2015, the majority of papers at SCMS, the conference, were no longer on film. And yet 80% of the papers published in that same society's journal were on film. And anecdotally, I've been hearing since I joined the society, from various people that they didn't feel like this was their journal, right? They paid their dues, but their journal didn't want their work. And that disgusted me, right? And we're talking about like folks in documentary studies, folks in video game studies, folks in working in black cinema, folks working in third cinema. The, the breadth of people who did not feel like they were welcomed by something called Cinema Journal broke my fucking heart. And that's why I wanted to edit it, and that's why I wanted to change the name. Francesco, you've been waiting a very long time. <laughs> Go ahead. No. I was just going to say amen. <laughs> no, thank you. And I, I want to go back to your previous uh, uh, remarks. Um, and uh, really, I apologize about Bordwell, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I... But I... I bring... <laughs> I bring the experience of being involved in, uh, in, in two sides of, of the Atlantic. So the constitution of uh, the community in Europe and the constitution of the community here. Because I'm unhappy, I'm old. <laughs> and uh, of course, I want to be very precise. I find the difference of languages a great element. And I do not care about objects. And in this, I, sorry, I, Andre, I do not agree with you. It's a waste of time to think uh, whether it's cinema, media, etc. It's not important that the, or I mean, the constitution or say the structure of knowledge is historical. It changes at any moment. My concern is uh, political. My concern is political and is not to find the 10 readings that everybody quotes. It's not that. That was a horrible model. Is to be, to, to be free, not only free, but to, to, to be proud, each of us, of what we are doing, but don't stop in thinking that the dialogue is in our duty. And that is for two reasons. I'm very practical on that. That is for our students. Because to our students, we have to give them the sense of a wide field in which they can not only occupy or know one single position, but have the breadth of the entire community. This is and also, if I can say, also because they pay yes. for coming to us. So we have to go them really the best knowledge possible. And one of the wealthy of our community is this wealthy of the community. So that's the first point. And the second point, maybe I'm wrong because I'm, I'm still, even though a dual citizen, I'm still terribly Italian and that's not good. But, or European. But in this moment, I go back to your question, in which the university is under attack. 
the idea of giving the sense of a community is a political act. Because in, in politics, when you, you look, look at the sciences. The science is as fragmented, even more fragmented than, than us. There are departments of physics in which people are not able to speak each other. But nevertheless, they do not stop dialogue and feeling they are engaged in the same field. This is what I ask. And on, from this point of view, I completely agree what you, you just said. Is not formal differences. They do not, they do not matter at all. Is the substance of this being proud of being a, a member of a community and to develop this sense of communality, which is important yeah. for moral and for political reasons. I'm happy to say that uh, I, don't, I disagree with, uh, with part of what you said, uh, uh, Francesco. Maybe you didn't understand exactly or I didn't express exactly what I wanted to say. But one thing is very important. The, the change of the name of Cinema Journal recently is just 15 years later after the, name, uh, the change of the name of the society. If you do a society, we, we call it, you change the name for cinema and media studies, it's for sure that 15 years later, the title of the journal is not uh, sync. And also, uh, remind to me, there was a, a, in 2002, there was a, a, a hesitation on the name. It was television or was it? Yeah. Yeah, it was a debate about cinema and television studies, and, yeah. and finally it was cinema and media studies, which is kind of a bu bureaucratic, I don't know if it's correct to say that, but bureaucratic or institution decision. We are cinema and media, so it's, it's forcing the thing. Why media? Because you know also uh, uh, SCMS as for publicity, as uh, I have it in my computer, I don't remember exactly, but it's written uh, TV, uh, uh, television, video, uh, video games, and uh, et cetera, et cetera. There's a lot of, uh, 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 of uh, in the ban uh, sur la on the, uh, on the, 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 the publicity, yeah. it talks about a lot of uh, fields. But anyway, I don't think, uh, I'm not sure I agree with the decision that was made in 2002. I'm not sure. At the risk of belaboring this for one more minute. <laughs> <laughs> that decision had everything to do, I think, with feminism. And with the fact that women were studying television, pioneering the study of television, thinking about domesticity, femininity, turning the, right, the discourse um, in that direction. And that was the moment when Consoling Passions was founded as potentially another, an alternate institution, a conference on feminism, video, and television, right, that was trying to capture that political and intellectual energy that was perceived to be marginalized um, at, at the Society for Cinema Studies. So I don't know if you want to. Yeah. Um, but I, I do think it was precisely political, right, um, in that sense. And I'll just add, since it's at, this is at the center and this is thinking of our 50th anniversary, that the time, what you're saying, corresponds a lot to the timetable of what happened at the center um, in that, well, I wasn't going to say too much, but uh, in that the conferences we talked about from 75 to 85 where Marianne uh, attended um, back to back to back years, is that what we were thinking? Um, that those conferences were uh, a different model of cinema studies. It was the older SCS model. And what started to happen, especially under Kathy Woodward's uh, directorship for in the uh, 80s and 90s is that the Center for 20th Century Studies became focused on feminist issues, on queer issues, and on issues of media and television. So it's interesting to me hearing you say this about 2002 and consoling passions and so forth, because it allows me to put together a piece of our history here at uh, C20 slash C21 
And probably, we were probably instrumental, maybe not the only, certainly not the only ones, but probably we had a, an impact on this change that you're describing there too. So anyway, it was just useful connection. Can we let anybody else, audience, take it? I hesitate to introduce a totally different kind of question. Um, but um, so it's useful. It's been useful hearing about the history of the relationship to television and to consoling passions and to cinema and media studies and to women's interventions as well and uh, with TV studies. and. And now we have, I think, kind of a solid name, if I can say, that Society of Cin the Society of Cinema and Media Studies Journal. I, I like, I agree with that. I didn't vote either. Be I just didn't. But but I, 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 I I'm really happy about that. That that it was changed. I think. Um, but so the one thing I wanted to ask. So film, TV. The one thing we have. We. I mean, we've talked a lot about the digital throughout the conference. Um, and I, and we've talked about politics, and the thing, and, and there have been great pa panels on the digital today, and and these new forms of, uh, and the last few days, web TV and open TV, and this is not really a question about cinema, but about digital media, and uh, I don't even want to say it, but. Um, Fake news. <laughs> um, the the question I was thinking about W. J. T. Mitchell's uh, article in the late '90s was it or 2000 about the end of uh, the image as as, as reference of, of truth, right? The end of the index, and with the digital this recent trends with no one has mentioned the president of this country. Thankfully, it's been a nice break. Um, but I'm just wondering if that's something that we are thinking about in terms of the politics of our field. I mean, I feel like it is something we have to, we're confronting. I'm teaching a course on cinema and digital culture, and I have now every year since 2006 been integrating new things all the time, whether it's, um, uh, you know, Pokemon Go, all you know different versions of virtual reality games and and now fake news and and I don't know what is next um, but I'm just wondering if maybe you could talk about how that kind of fits in with our thoughts about uh, not the ends of cinema but or the ends of cinema studies um, media studies for me um, the this opposition to truth is one of the reasons I got into the field of media studies, to create a critical thinking about um, what is represented. And I'm just wondering if you have thoughts on that. Um, I, that's a really interesting question, because I was thinking you know, during, especially the latter part of the conference about the relation of the image to evidentiary truth. And um, I remember when the, the Rodney King incident happened and there was actually a, um, uh, uh, there was some kind of, um, it's too late, <laughs> something they want you to sign to <laughs> support. The, the petition. A petition. A petition. <laughs> <laughs> I have metaphoric <laughs> aphasia, the, the, the second kind of aphasia. <laughs> there was a petition that, um, uh, to sign. Uh, everybody was appalled about what happened to Rodney King, et cetera. But the petition was supposed to be um, directed towards, I don't know, Congress or politicians or whatever. I don't know to whom it was directed. But it was basically, it was SCS then, no M. Um, and it basically was saying that we, as experts in images, want to confirm that we believe the image is realistic, that it's transparent. Not in those exact words, but that's basically what it was saying. And I think um, 
it's really important to resist that, you know, as um, uh, appealing as it, or attractive as it might be in the era of Trump. But um, I, I think about it a lot in relation to something uh, that Michael brought up in his talk, which I really wanted to talk about, but I didn't really formulate until later. And that has to do with the uh, cell phone videos and the status of the cell phone videos. And you said they were unwatchable for you, or at least the part well, that Well, they're the unwatchable for the very point you're bringing up, which is that, mm -hmm. Judith, that when Judith Butler talks about the Rodney King videotape as being, a, it, it's impossible to think that the videotape can operate as evidentiary truth. Yeah. And, and, and for me, that's why the work that she did on that, where she talks about the petition that you're speaking about, that that needs to be required reading now. Mm -hmm. For people to yes. understand, I mean, why the hell do we keep circulating these videos of do you see it, do you see it, do you see it? Yeah. And that's mm -hmm. not the point. <laughs> it's never, I well, mean, you can go you back to lynching photographs right. and, and postcards and see it. There's a lot of, everybody's seen it. Yes. But, but what, you, yeah, what you said to your students was that the only thing that has changed is that we now have images. Mm -hmm. right. right. And I don't think that's unimportant. No. It's not enough. Yeah. by any means, but it's not unimportant. And it has more to do with distribution, I think, than it does with uh, the relation to the real. Because these, these uh, they have become a kind of genre in their own right, so that the, the sight of authenticity or of the real is in the shakiness of the image, the fact that you can tell that it's a cell phone image. And what was interesting to me was that the, the term glitch has been used quite a bit. Um, in the second, depending on which breakout panels you went to. Uh, but it's been used a lot, and I think you used glitch in relation to this. I did, this song. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 and that's what's interesting, is that she's taking that up and kind of marring the image. Um, and, but I'm wondering, uh, in the first uh, film that you showed, um, she only marred, marred is the word I'm using, scratched, you know, distorted the image in the black and white section of the film. There's, yeah, the, the green DVD, there's, there's yeah, the yeah. The, um, yeah. But what were the color sections of that film? Because they were left completely unscratched or undistorted. Yeah. Right, the, uh, the Baltimore ones, right? Mm -hmm. The Baltimore ones have a lot more of the, the similar, that, that, the speckled color. Oh, okay, okay. Anyway, I just thought that was a, yeah. um, uh, the problematic is really important to think about in relation to what you brought up. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, I have a comment that I'm uh, going to start um, as a depressive comment. Uh, sorry, I cannot see the, anybody down there, yeah. And hopefully it's going to finish a little, a little less depressing. <laughs> I stumbled upon um, a quotation of Choran, Emil Choran, from a book which is uh, called The Trouble of, with Being Born. And I want to briefly, it's short, I mean, I think it's kind of relevant for, for, for the topic of the ends of cinema. Um, we, don't, we do not rush towards that, we flee the catastrophe of birth, survivors struggling to forget it. And now that's the interesting part, I think. Fear of death is merely the projection, the projection, that's a relevant word, of course, into the future of a fear which dates back to our first moment of life. So I wonder, um, in this sense, uh, um, if it's relevant to think about the beginning of cinema to understand actually uh, it's possible that, and I was trying to think about this, uh, this quotation in relation to, to Jane panel this morning and uh, in relation to this ontology and ghostology and, and, and how this ontology is, is the Ridian, of course, and, and this lost origin and the traces and how this sort of framework works very well in relation to, to photography in a way. And, 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 and then from that I was trying to think about the, the transformative reappropriation that um, Mark Fisher, and I want to really mention him because unfortunately he killed himself uh, not long ago, a comrade. Um, 
and, and, and this transformative appropriation of this, of this Deridian uh, ghostology, ontology, was actually, well, it's not a fear of, 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 of a lost origin, it's the fear of a lost future. And, and, and then the fear of a lost future and the futurability of cinema itself in terms of, uh, if you think the, the, the sort of the ontological status of cinema versus the photographic one, the fact that, well, in cinema we always expecting an image after another, so it's this, the, the future, it's, 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 it's intrinsic in, in, in the language itself, while when we see a photograph we don't expect the next one happening after it. So, so in that sense, the lost future and, 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 and of cinema is also the possibility and, uh, of, of opening and turning the end of cinema into, into its ends, and I, I don't know if you, any of you feels uh, or any of this resonate with, <laughs> with, with your thinking. That was a very touching uh, <laughs> passage, and you know uh, the difference between Derrida and Roland Barthes on the specter is that actually Derrida was not troubled by becoming a specter. In in a late inner, uh, in a late speech he gave in 2002 uh, at the Institute for Media Studies in Paris, he said, you know, my favorite definition of a trace is that thing which has nothing to do with me, and and that parts. It's a part of me that departs. And I think as a departure, I certainly will take away everything that had nothing to do with me that was said today, because there were so many beautiful things said. So just thank you again to the organizers, and I'll pass the mic. <laughs> I do want to say really quickly that what, one of the things that's been so utterly rich and exciting about this has been the intellectual history on display and how much I've learned about uh, what the field was, uh, what it is now, and what it is possibly going to be in the future. And it, it really has been deeply inspiring to hear about um, the multiple histories of the field that I thought I knew and I didn't even know. Um, and all of the wonderful directions it's about to go in. So uh, that's both in terms of the plenaries and all of the breakout sessions. So it's really been an intellectual thrill for me. So Richard's going to say a few thank yous and then we'll wrap up. Yeah, closing comments are really thanks. So again, <laughs> I do want to thank whether any of them are here to hear it, but it'll be on the video stream. Uh, I again want to thank um, Molly and Kyle, who really uh, were in charge of all the communications and the panel planning and things like that, really the, the public face of this conference. Uh, they're both, as you may or may not know, graduate students in cinema studies. So uh, this is a great event for them. Also, Cami Thomas, who's our other C21 fellow, and she was really the behind the scenes person who did, made sure the food was there and the buses and all of that important stuff. And uh, Lauren McCarg, our office assistant, who made sure you got paid. Uh, that you got paid, sorry. <laughs> um, but, but we did feed you. We did feed you. Uh, so, okay. I, I, indulge me in one second. We've been pressured in the past by our university to charge for this conference because, well, can't you make a little money, right? This is the neoliberal argument. And I've absolutely resisted it. Our motto, one of the things we say for all our talks, is free and open to the public. And furthermore, this is now to you, uh, who have paid, or who's, if you're fortunate, whose universities have paid to come here, that it really seemed an injustice to me that we would invite plenary speakers and not ask them to pay to register for the conference. And then we would invite you, who are coming out and really making the conference what it is, uh, and, and ask you to pay. So, you know, sorry we can't pay you, but we're not at least charging you. And, and <laughs> but let me just say, I, and I say that as a preface to saying that really what, and I think uh, others have said this as well, what's made this conference so uh, valuable is, in fact, all the, all of you in the breakout sessions, in the audience, because the, the consistency of quality at this conference. I mean, I've been doing, well, I've been here since 2010, so this is, I guess, our eighth conference that I've been 
uh, involved with. And uh, this has been the most consistently good conference of all. I mean, we've had some excellent conferences. And that's for you. Uh, so thank you all. Uh, last but not least, I have to thank Jocelyn because um, it's, I mean, Marianne, this wouldn't have been Ends of Cinema if it wasn't for Jocelyn. I wanted to do a conference, I wanted to do a conference on post-cinema because I think, Shane, are you around? I emailed or I Facebook message Shane when we first started thinking and I said, has anybody really done a post-cinema like a full-blown post-cinema conference. And Shane's like, I don't think so. I thought, wow, that'd be really great. But, you know, I said, of course, if we're going to do a cinema conference, uh, I need to involve, like, my colleagues who are cinema scholars. And so uh, I asked Jocelyn, and she's okay with post-cinema as a part of the conference, but, uh, but because of her, <laughs> but because of her, this has been an amazing conference in, uh, cinema and media and whatever studies, uh, as opposed to a more sort of digital post-cinema conference, which maybe we will do sometime in the future. But just to say that the reason this conference is so great is not me, because I don't really, it, this isn't my field, but uh, really all credit I give to Jocelyn, so thank you. Uh, again, I think she gets another round of applause. Okay, I believe, sadly, that you may have to wait if you want that shuttle about 20 minutes, but uh, it's a gorgeous day, so hang out and breathe the air. Thanks, everybody, very much. Thank you, all.